Yo, what's up everybody? My name is Tech and today I'm going to teach you how to texture 3D Valorant models just like some of your favorite content creation orgs like Sentinels or The Guard. Uh, so for this tutorial, we're going to be using Blender and I'm going to be using Photoshop as well. But if you're just trying to do something simple like change the color and not add logos or anything else, just using Blender is good enough. All right, so let's hop right into it. All right, so now that we have Blender open, we're going to go ahead and import all of our models. So we just delete everything and do file append. We can go ahead and hop into the Katuza Valorant pack, which is my pack of choice. There's other packs other people have made, but this is just the one that I have downloaded and it will have all your agents and materials. Now I'm going to go into th third person for animation because the first person has a lot more bones in the face. And so unless I'm making like a pose for a thumbnail, I'll typically opt for the third person just because it's easier to work with. Uh, so for this tutorial, I'm just going to show you what it looks like on Jet. And we're going to go ahead and go into the Jet collection and click on Katuza and append it. And now we have our Jet in Blender. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change the shading mode right here and just turn off the bones so I can easily see that the Jet model is correct. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select just her actual mesh and I'm going to go to the shading tab. And now we can see how she's actually textured. So right here, you can see there's the diffuse, the normal map and the MRAE, which has like reflections, emissions, metallic, all that stuff. Uh, and so the one we're going to be focusing on for now is diffuse. Now, since we have our diffuse selected, we can go ahead and click texture paint. And just like that, it will open up her entire unwrapped texture onto the screen here. And there's a bunch of settings you can use here. Uh, mix right here or this box is the blending mode. So you can change how the color actually works. And I think you should try playing around with this and check out how it works. So right here we have the color selector. Now for this tutorial, I want to make her red. And if you don't know where a texture is on here, because it can be pretty confusing with some of the other agents as well, you can actually just color directly on the mesh right here. And then you can look over at the texture. So we can see right here in the bottom left, this part with a big red blob on it is obviously her back. And so now we know where it is. And of course we can just color it in like this and it will be solid red. But when you do that, as you can see, you lose a lot of the texture and pattern. This is just a solid color, but if you look at the front, it has all these cool little lines in it. So what we're actually gonna do is change the blending mode right here to color. And now with this red selected, when we start to paint over the back here, I'm just going to do this rough for now, but you can see it'll change the entire color for red. So if you're doing something simple, like just the color change, Blender is good enough. But if you want to add logos and other stuff, it's a whole lot easier in, uh, in Photoshop. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do image and we're going to do save as, and we're just going to name it whatever the default is and save that image. And so now we're going to go ahead and open this up in Photoshop. And we're going to open this up in Photoshop. And as you can see, we have our fully unwrapped texture. Now, nothing's done to it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock the layer and I'm just going to go ahead and try to get rid of this logo here because I want to put my own. So using the lasso tool, I like the polygonal lasso tool just because it makes it easier and I don't have to worry about being too precise. And of course, the, the closer you can get to the original texture is better. I'm just doing this quickly for this tutorial, but obviously if you were doing this for a commission or for a client, you'd probably want to take more time on this. Uh, and so we can just apply it. It looks good for now, but it still isn't amazing. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the smudge tool and just try to kind of even this out to make it look a bit better here. For now, I'm just going to keep it as this and merge the layers. And now I'm going to create another layer because I want to change the back of her jacket to the color red. So I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool. It makes it easier on some of these ones with sharp edges. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the entire back here. So it's like this, just tracing around the back. The lasso tool is pretty good for doing this. With a lot of them, you'll have to go in and make manual changes, especially around the edge of the document. It kind of glitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the rest with the marquee tool and that's a pretty good selection so I'm just going to select my color and do alt backspace to fill with the foreground and now just like in blender we have the special blending mode and I'm going to change it to color so now we have our bright red color and if you miss some stuff here you can just go in with your brush tool and kind of clean it up 
well and that is looking pretty good so now we're going to go ahead and take our logo and just throw it onto the back here and i think this would look better with a white logo so i'm just going to add a color overlay white so i think that's looking pretty good but i also want to make sure that the front of the jacket is red as well so going up here i know that this texture is the front of it and once again you can do the magnetic lasso tool but for me, since a lot of the area around it is just black, I'm gonna go ahead and use this red brush here and just get a pretty big area, making sure not to paint over the knives or the pants. That's looking okay. And I'm also gonna get the hood while I'm here. I, the best practice would be to do this all in different layers. So if you wanted to adjust things individually, all you have to do is edit those layers. Uh, so for example, you could have a red hood or a black hood uh, with other things. So I'm just going to color this all in and change the blending mode to color. So that's looking okay here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to save it as a copy. I'm going to name it copy two because I've done this before. Uh, and now in here, I'm just going to do image replace and I'm going to select this copy too. And just like that, it will change her back hood and the front of her jacket. So that's an easy way to change the texture here, but you'll notice that when I switch to this view, when I look at her shading, I can still see the old logo here, which isn't what I want. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to go back into the shading tab and as you can see we're going to go back to this normal map texture which has all the bumps go back to texture paint here and when we look at the back she still has this logo and we don't want this logo on her back obviously because now we have our new one so we're just going to go ahead and take our eyedropper tool and select a different part here change this to mix and we're just going to go ahead and color this in and just like that, you can see it all disappears. Now you do lose a little bit of bump on these lines. There's probably a better way to do it, like opening it in Photoshop and color matching everything and just avoiding the lines in general. But I think this looks pretty good. And all that you have to do now is add your lights and you can have your custom texture jet. Now I spent a little bit more time and I actually made a better one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this image once again with our copy here. And as you can see, I also added a black overlay over her pants to make them a lot darker since they're kind of like a bluish tint. I did that by using the soft light one, which is right here, but I did it in Photoshop. So all we're gonna do here now is set up our little render so you can see how it looks. We're gonna add some lights. All right, now we have kind of a nice lighting set up here. So I'm gonna change my viewport mode to cycles because I like how that looks for this uh, 128 and 1024 I'm gonna add our camera in and use control alt zero on the numpad to select that now we can just move it around in this window here so go ahead and do this and just click render render image and just like that we have our new textured jet model and so there's a lot of different things you can change. You can also make the eyes more realistic by putting in different eye textures you can find on Google and various websites. But this is just a really quick way to edit the textures and the more time consuming or the more time you spend, obviously the better your product is gonna look. So do this once so you don't have to do it again. Uh, the reason I prefer using Photoshop is once you commit to a change in Blender, it actually overwrites the original background of it so if you color something in with mix and you don't like it 10 minutes later and you've done a bunch of other changes you can't get over it and you can't remove it because there's no layers so i uh, highly recommend using photoshop or some other editing tool for this now just to show you one more thing because i think it's important uh, we can go ahead and make a new scene here and just delete everything and append another model but this one i'm actually going to use sage because I think there's something important to show you. Uh, when you go ahead and go into the viewport shading mode, her earrings are green. 
that you'll see up here that your earrings are green but these are also green so when you go into your shading tab and you go to her diffuse there's only one green texture uh, and so if you actually modify her earrings for example by making them uh, a vibrant color like yellow you'll notice it doesn't really change anything else like there's no there's no little green dot that changed it just paints it on her face and like this little area but obviously that little area is behind your neck so what you actually have to do is color in this whole thing yellow and when you go back to the right mode you can see now that this is yellow so these objects actually share the same texture which is important to note because some models will do that obviously just because why do you need two of the green reflective orb textures when they're both the same thing also if we make another new one and we go ahead and append the killjoy model so just putting that in there uh if you do actually make modifications on her hat you can go to shading diffuse texture paint so her hat actually has a thing right here and you'll see it by going up here now most people would probably just want to get rid of that completely so if you just color it in with mix it looks like it's still there because you still have it in the normal map so once again shading normal map texture paint go ahead and select this on emboss object here and go ahead and make our brush radius a little bit smaller and just color it in and just like that the logo is gone so just keep that in mind when you want to add custom stuff because obviously it's going to look really strange if you have these weird embossed areas that don't match up with your new logo so i hope this was helpful hopefully you can get something out of this and start making professional stuff or just make your own personal branding projects it's just nice to have lying around and a nice skill to have um there's plenty of other texturing tutorials, but I figured I'd make this one just specifically for Valorant since I know a lot of people have asked me about what I've done for some of my own personal ones. So I figured I'd just make this to help out the community. Thanks again for watching. Links are in the description for all the downloads and I hope you all have a good day. So peace.